Hey, welcome back to Diode Press. I'm Graham. I first off wanted to thank you all for subscribing to the channel. I just hit 400 subscribers, which is just awesome. I really appreciate you guys leaving comments down below and any feedback you have about the videos. Also, if there's ever anything that you want to see more in detail, let me know down below and in the next video I'll try to cover it, because sometimes I kind of cut things out to save time on the videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do, because I have a bunch of cool projects coming up over the next few months. So today's video is going to be a mezzotin print. So I participate in this print exchange every year with other mezzotin artists. There's 24 of them. And the only restrictions are the paper size and then the print has to be predominantly mezzotin. So I decided to make my print on a small copper plate. So thanks again for watching and subscribing and let's jump right into the print. The first step for this project is to shape my copper plate. The piece of copper was actually a scrap cut off from a different print. I knew I wanted to play with debossing in this print. So I wanted to make sure to try and break away from the standard horizontal image in a square plate. So I marked my cut lines with an etching needle and then use a saw with a fine metal cutting blade to make quick work of the copper plate. Cutting the copper left some nasty sharp jagged edges. So before I could start using the mezzotin rocker, I had to clean them up a bit or chip all sorts of teeth off on the rocker. Now I'm using a sharpie to mark off the pattern I'm going to rock on the plate. I rock one direction, rotate the plate to the next line, and rock again. I do this until I rock all the angles twice. So a couple hours later for me, or about 10 seconds for you, the plate's fully rocked and it's time to really get the edges ready to print. Since it's a narrow plate with lots of curves, I file a pretty shallow angle, so when I print it doesn't tear or buckle the paper around those edges. After filing, I used 600 and then 1000 grit sandpaper wrapped around the block to really polish the edges up. For this print, I let the shape of the plate dictate a bit of the image. I started with a rough sketch, then moved up to a full size rough sketch to play with the composition and size. Finally, I moved to a more refined drawing, scanned it, flipped it on the computer, and then darkened it a bit so I could transfer it easily onto my plate. I taped down the plate to a sheet of paper so it wouldn't slip around. Then using transfer paper, I drew the image onto the plate. The white transfer paper shows up really well on the copper plate. Now I scraped and burnished my image onto the plate. I started on one end and then worked to the other, trying not to disturb the transfer lines too much. Since the mezzotin plates are just a field of copper burrs, there's not a lot of area for the transferred image to stick onto. For this plate, since it's such a small, narrow plate, I used my smallest scraper throughout the whole thing. It definitely took some extra time to do, but it's the only way I could really get all the detail that I was looking for.
So now the plate is fully scraped and burnished. I move on to the next piece of the print. I want these three objects that are coming out of the plate to be debossed into the paper. So I use a thin sheet of plastic and transfer my sketch onto it. I used a small mirror as a guide since it happened to be the same size as the boxes. Once they were all traced, I cut them out with an X-Acto blade. I then lined them up on the plate again and did a detail pass on the part that overlays on top of the copper plate. The plastic will deboss the paper as well as block out the plate where it overlaps. The last step before printing is to create a template to line up the plate and the three objects. After drawing all my dimension lines, I tape down the sheet of plastic onto the paper, line it all up again, and then hot glue each object onto the plastic. Now everything's all set and I'm ready to ink up the plate and run a print. So that's going to be it for this video. Part two, the final part, will be up next week. So make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't, and I'll see you then. Thanks.